Welcome to today's Lunch and Learn webinar, Engineering Change Management for Manufacturers, brought to you by Archer Point and To Increase. Today's webinar will be presented by Rohir Husson, International Sales and Partner Manager with Archer Point's partner, To Increase. Rohir has been working with customers and Dynamics partners in the manufacturing space around the globe for many years. His passion is to help organizations and individuals improve their day-to-day -day work by leveraging the right tools, helping them work smarter, and keeping the focus on core processes. Rohir works for Two Increase, held by Microsoft and within the Dynamics community as a pivotal, pivotal, <laughs> pivotal independent <laughs> software vendor for the manufacturing tribe. I don't know why I was having trouble with that, but I guess I get to um, do some editing on this video. <laughs> In today's webinar, Rohir will discuss how to effectively capture feedback and change requests in a thorough and controlled way to ensure they are addressed properly, which equates to happier customers who know you listen. Rohir, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Suzanne, and very warm welcome to everybody who joined. Uh, today we're talking about engineering change management. Uh, we try to keep it short, sweet, but meaningful. Um, we have the agenda for this Lunch and Learn, which is uh, a small introduction on who to increase is for those who are not familiar. Then I would like to share some uh, eye-openers on engineering change management. Uh, we also want to have a glimpse into uh, the value proposition that to increase offers on engineering change management. Then there is time for some question and answers, um, and you will be pointed to a uh, free deep dive uh, webinar that we already recorded uh, for you. Uh, so for those who are not familiar with To Increase, we are an independent software vendor. Uh, one of our important partners is Archer Point. Uh, we work with Archer Point to uh, sell and implement our software solutions on top of Microsoft Dynamics Business Central or NAV. Um, we do that uh, also with other partners around the globe. Uh, we have um, many customers also uh, outside of the United States, but also in the United States. Um, we have a very extensive portfolio, uh, very much geared towards manufacturing. Uh, we have a food manufacturing and distribution solution, but we also have an industrial equipment manufacturing solution, also known as project-based manufacturing or engineer to order uh, and besides that we we offer a lot of what we call complementary products which can be uh, bought uh, standalone uh, one of them that we will look at today is um, engineering change management which is part of our um, product engineering suite which also um, adds quality management to the equation Besides that, we have some other solutions around uh, status management of your items, a scanning solution in the warehouse, and a, a connectivity layer to, to set up uh, master data and connect uh, third-party applications. Um, some of our customers in the manufacturing space, uh, you might know as I pull up some of these names. Uh, one that is uh, very re renowned, obviously, is GoGo, uh, also known as Aircell. They uh, engineer Wi-Fi poles, but also uh, install uh, and service them, especially in uh, airplanes, but also in other uh, locations. Uh, one of the customers that we also helped uh, to implement our engineering change uh, management solution that we are talking uh, about today. Uh, but to kind of set the stage and make sure that we are all on the same page, I've, uh, I've made a... Um, uh, definition on what actually engineering change management is, or at least what we are talking about today. So I will uh, read it for you as you can read along. It is uh, the change management process in product engineering is the process of requesting, determining, attainability, planning, implementing, and evalu ev evaluating of changes to a product. It, its main goals are to support the processing and traceability of changes to an interconnected set of factors. Uh, quite a mouthful. Um, I will get a little bit deeper into that. Uh, but as I was preparing for this webinar today, I was thinking it might be interesting if I share some of the best practices uh, on engineering change management that I recently found 
Um, the Aberdeen Group, they did a, a research among more than 200 uh, engineering companies about uh, their engineering change management uh, structure and approach. Um, and they've identified a couple of best in class participants. Um, and what happened is that some interesting uh, best practices surfaced um, from, from that, uh, that research. And I want to share them with you. Um, and these are some of the percentages that I will now uh, get into because 85% says that there is room for approve, improvement. And that basically uh, says that the cost of inefficient change management can be fairly high. Uh, change management, when you do it effectively, provides a major opportunity to uh, basically improve your development efficiency. But when you do it incorrectly, it can lead to uh, delays as stakeholders lose time waiting for decisions uh, or they have to wait for updated information or work that must be redone because it was based on outdated design details. Um, and it can also lead to higher costs when errors lead to scrap and rework. So a poorly managed change process basically prevents organizations from responding uh, to time to market and it brings cost pressures, which obviously in turn has a direct impact on your product profitability. So uh, with the majority, which is 85% of the study participants indicating that there are problems with their current change management process, I think we can all agree that there is a lot of room uh, and opportunity uh, to, to improve the, the whole process around engineering change management. And some of this uh, might be an open door for you. Uh, some sound might sound, sound familiar, but um, what I find in, in, in real life, as I talk to a lot of these engineering uh, companies is, is that, uh, that there is some structure in place, but that there's definitely room for improvement. Now, 70% of the best in class, they have a plan. Uh, and, and that sounds again like an open door, but, but the reality is sometimes different. Uh, do you actually have a formal plan in place? Uh, and, and the best class, best in class companies, uh, from those 70% uh, had more likely than their competitors created a formal plan for implementing engineering changes, which obviously improves the communication and promotes better collaboration among the stakeholders. It also enables these companies to address the complexity of their products by planning out the implementation across engineering disciplines, but also across the, the subsystems that make up the product. Uh, and it also helps identify the necessary steps for supply chain collaboration and coordination. So again, the question, do you have a formal plan in place? And then 74% of the leaders add supporting product data. And what do I mean with that? I, I mean with that knowledge management. So these leaders, they ensure that information related to a change is readily available. And uh, these guys are 74% more likely than their competitors to include product data like, uh, for instance, CAD files or, or bill of materials, analysis files, um, or other information that can go along with a um, change request. Uh, we, for instance, also support um, adding, um, adding pictures so that your service technicians or whoever can add uh, pictures of something that is constantly breaking down uh, to that engineering change request. Um, and then 81% they use some kind of review board. Uh, and basically that means they have organizational support. So the best in class companies are 81% more likely to use a change review board to review, but also to approve changes. And that obviously helps them to assign accountability and ownership of that change process. Uh, these leaders also hold separate meetings to, for instance, first review the change and then determine if it should be approved. And then they hold uh, a second meeting to focus on its implementation. And, and what they do with that is they, they basically separate the review of the business value of that change from the, uh, the more detailed decision as how to execute on that change. Then 
79% of uh, these best-in-class uh, leaders, they uh, are probably going to have some kind of audit process to the change process. Um, and what do I mean to say with that? I mean performance management and continuous improvement. So these leaders, they also differentiate themselves uh, to the degree of control that they hold over, over their business process. Uh, but also the ability to execute on their goals. So they are 79% more likely to audit to make sure that it's followed and it's working and providing continuous feedback uh, and the opportunity to regularly identify bottlenecks and continuously improve the process. They're also 2.2 times more likely to use metrics to track the effectiveness of the process. So while this improves the change process itself, what it also does is it, it enables these leaders to find ways to prevent avoidable, avoidable changes. And then the last point, 39% uh, see software to manage engineering change management as pivotal. Uh, and obviously um, all of these customers and, and companies, they have some kind of digital system in place. Uh, but they don't really leverage that in the way that they should. Um, so, so this comes down on enabling technology. So the best-in-class companies are 39% more likely to use some kind of product lifecycle management uh, system. Uh, and in that way, they can manage their engineering change, uh, and they also provide a central location for design information, with traceability across the deliverables and with management to that change workflow. And traceability is key as it helps you to identify dependencies between components and it also automatically notifies affected individuals about the change that impacts their work. Now having said that, um, again these might be some open doors for you, maybe some eye openers, um, but at the same time I do believe that, that these are some of the things that you need to have in place to, ha to run an effective engineering change management process. Uh, it's basically the basics and, and there are no shortcuts, shortcuts to that. Uh, and, and what we are trying to do with our uh, engineering change management solution is also to, to tie in into in the whole process and to help you to, to form a structure into how you can execute on your engineering change management process. Now, um, like I said, you will have a link in your inbox if you join this uh, webinar, but you will also have a recorded webinar on the uh, website of, um, of ArcherPoint with regards to uh, an extensive demo on our solution. Uh, this is a typically a screenshot for the engineering change manager, uh, but what, what can you actually do with our solution? Well, if I will slice that up in, in four pieces to, um, to keep it simple. Uh, first of all, what we offer is, is what we call an engineering change request. So what we do is we basically um, open up the floor uh, for the whole internal organization, but this can also be uh, your customers via customer service or your service technicians, uh, where, where we say, okay, everybody who is involved and has a, a certain stake into the product can generate an engineering change request. Um, and in that way, you basically create a steady flow of feedback towards your engineering departments on what's actually happening with your product in the field. Uh, maybe it's a service technician that, that uh, is working with your product and, and sees that a certain screw is continuously breaking down on, or there's another weak part uh, uh, or, or there's a customer that, that runs into issues. Uh, whatever it may be, uh, you can create those engineering change requests. And from these um, engineering change requests, you basically create a backlog where you can add the product data like um, uh, article number or whatever type of data you want to add. And in that way, the engineers can, first of all, see and prioritize because they want to work on first, but they can also use that data to analyze uh, what is happening to their products and if there are certain article numbers that continue to break down uh, and, and have uh, need a special focus uh, 
uh, and special attention because they are starting to to move up in 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 the rows. Um, then we have what we call engineering change request approvals. Um, I, I basically touched that already, but you can analyze the impact on on your whole business process. You can set the priority. Okay, I will work on this first, and I will pick it up, um, or I will maybe set the priority lower so that it will be on my backlog, but it will be all the way down. And when I have time, I will work on that. Then we have. Um, I will go to the bottom engineering change orders so typically what engineers do is they work in that separate system uh, which we uh, know as a product life cycle management system uh, for instance solid works uh, and what they do is they, um, they they basically work in that system on the changes but obviously once the actual change has been done you also want to bring that change back into your erp system inside nav in a controlled based manner so that's when uh, the engineer can create an engineering change order or the engineering change manager can create that engineering change order uh, and add a, an approval workflow to that so that you will not just um, get all these changes into your erp system but in a controlled based manner you can say hey there's a new change, the bill of material has been adjusted, the article numbers need to be updated or the prices or whatever. And in that way, you basically create a loop between first of all, the organization by the, the requests that come into the engineers, the engineers work on those changes and then they bring it back into the organization by that change order. And in that way, we, we basically close the loop between um, the external organization or all the stakeholders of a product and the actual engineers that own and work on that product. Now, the question that I got asked uh, many times is, are there some PLM systems that you integrate with? And the question is yes. Uh, and there are three main PLM systems that we often encounter in the field. By far, SolidWorks is the most uh, used by NAV customers for as far as I know, uh, but also PTC Windshield and Siemens Team Center are some of the larger PLM systems that we uh, integrate with out of the box. Um, I promise to keep it short and sweet, so I hope this uh, steered up your appetite to, to get to know more about uh, our engineering change management solution. Thanks for watching this Archer Point video. If you found it helpful, make sure to check out our website and blog at www.archerpoint.com. Additionally, if you have any questions regarding our products, services, or information in this video, feel free to email us at info at archerpoint.com. Thanks.